right. Uh, we're in Easter. Anyone know why we call Easter Easter? I actually had to look it up this morning. Because it seems to make no sense, right? Christmas makes it a bit more obvious. Christ Mass, right? We're celebrating the birth of Christ. Easter, you know, nothing sounds like resurrection of Jesus, right? Those are not compatible. We call it Easter, actually, because it has to go back to about the 7th century England. A um, monk named Bede, B-E-D-E, uh, who started referring to it, uh, the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of Jesus, as Easter, because that month at that time was named for Oster, O-E-O-S-T-R-E, uh, a pagan goddess of spring and fertility. And so uh, it was kind of reclaiming this pagan goddess what comes to life, what brings things to life, and now saying what brings things to life, the resurrection of Christ brings things to life. So as I thought about that, I thought that's a great question for us during Easter. It isn't just understanding that the tomb is empty, right? That's just information, which is not bad. But then the question becomes, what do we do with that information? And a question maybe that we can ask ourselves is, because we understand, because we know, because we believe, because we trust, the tomb is empty, Christ is raised, what does that bring to life within us? Because that is so much of what the early church was about. It wasn't just telling people the tomb was empty, but because the tomb was empty, it actually meant something different in their lives. They lived a different life than what was going on around them. And we see a glimpse of this life that they lived in this reading from Acts, from Acts 4, right? This was a community of people that had a profound effect of the resurrected Christ on them that caused them to live a life that seemed so countercultural to them what was going on, that people couldn't help but want to be part of it, is that they had an experience that caused them to see things differently. Now, how many people want to sell their house? How many people own a house, right? <laughs> well, my bank owns the house, really. But I live there, Paul. <laughs> Some of you are fortunate enough to be at that point later on where the bank doesn't own your house anymore. I'm not there yet. But I don't have a huge desire to sell my house, right, and to give everything away. I, how many people are, actually, most people are retired. Kristen, you and I, I think, are the non-retired people, right? <laughs> I'm saving for retirement. Are you saving for retirement, right? Is this picture of life, is this... The image of life given in this X reading. This is what I struggle with. Is it something that is supposed to be specifically emulated by us now? Or is it of that place, of that time, but we're different and that's not possible? We are different worlds, and I don't think it is fully possible to do that. And I don't think this reading is selected to say, everybody go sell your house. Give the money to the church and let us distribute it. That's not what I'm here to, to preach. But what I am here to preach is to ask ourselves, what is coming to life in our lives because the resurrected Christ is alive, because the tomb is empty? There is a group of people that lived in a time and place in which that was possible. But let's be honest. It didn't happen to everybody back then because we have other stories in the New Testament in which they would gather in people's homes and they still had ownership of it. So it wasn't something that everybody and anybody did. But it is true of this group of believers. But the question remains, what is coming to life within us because we know Christ is alive? How are our lives turned from being focused on ourselves 
to being focused on our neighbor. Because I think that is what made this group of early Christians different than the culture around them. It wasn't simply about how am I impacted by this, right? And I don't mean uh, the story of Jesus, but it means anything and everything. How does it impact me? How does it affect me? Instead, it was always how does it impact the other? And not just the anybody, but specifically those who are oppressed, those who are marginalized, those who are weak, the widow, the orphan, whatever it might be. It was always focused on the other. And how does it benefit them? How does my life benefit them? That is the question that we always need to be asking ourselves because the tomb is empty. Because Christ lives, we get a glimpse of what the future will be like. When there is no more poverty, there is no more sorrow, there is no more pain, there is no more tears, there is no more death. And so because we get a glimpse of what will be in the resurrected Christ, the question is, how do we bring that into fruition for us today? We say it every week when we say the Lord's Prayer. You know those words? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. I can't say this enough. We are not in a waiting room. Where now Jesus has risen, so when I die, I get to go to heaven. Yes, there is truth to that, right? All will be restored when Christ comes again. Heaven and earth will be one. Goodness and beauty and love will last and be eternal, and we will participate in it. And yet, it is not, the hope of faith is not just something that impacts the future. It is something that impacts us today in the way we view the world, the way we interact with the world, the way we live in the world. Is that we, we ask ourselves, what is coming to life within us that will benefit the other, right? I, I love the quote, I don't know who it's by. Uh, the meaning of life is to plant a tree of which the shade you will never get to enjoy. Right? Plant trees of which the shade you will never get to enjoy. To me, that is what it means to understand what what it means to understand that Christ lives. That the tomb is empty. To plant trees of which the shade you will never get to enjoy. And maybe in a way it means you enjoy shade of trees that other people planted. You see how that works? It's not about what do I benefit from? What do others benefit from? And then how do I benefit from others as well? That's the hope of the risen Christ. That's the hope 